That train was the early morning Ochotsk number no. 1, leaving Abashiri for Sapporo on the 17th of February 2016 in Japan's far northern Hokkaido, Siberia. Welcome to Studio La Jokri. This is Hokkaido Railroading Part 3, The Far North. Larry Krieg's Rail Video, number 38. I visited northern Hokkaido three times in winter, spring, and summer. Each time I was enchanted by the mountains, the land, the waters, and of course the trains. So, please join me and Froggy as we look at three seasons in northeastern, north central, and northwestern Hokkaido. In February 2016, I came to Sapporo right after the famous snow festival. During the festival, hotels were totally out of my price range, but anyway, the weather had been warm, the snow was slushy, and all that was left was a citywide after party cleanup. So I took the 730 Ochotsk number no. 2 to Abashiri. Rolling north out of Sapporo, the weather was sunny and cold. I found myself seated warm and comfortable, but right over a truck with a flat wheel. Bummer. This busy line takes us north under 20 kilovolt electrification, though we're running on diesel through a populous valley calling it smaller cities like Bibai and Takikawa. The sunshine didn't last long though. Soon we were speeding through heavy snowfall that kept station crews at Bibai busy clearing the platforms, but didn't slow the train at all. We stayed on schedule to the minute. Within half an hour, we had run out of the snow zone. Asahikawa is the second largest city in Hokkaido, about 80 miles north of Sapporo. I've never visited, only passed through a few times. The sun continued as we climbed into the Jomon mountain range. I was surprised when we stopped at Engaru and passengers in the know got up and rotated their seats around. Turns out it's a stub end station. Since there's a control cab at each end of the train, the engineer just walks to the other end and runs the train out to Kitami and Abashiri. Wish I'd gotten videos of it. It's the Jobon Tunnel. The tunnel. In fact, the entire Sekihoku line between Asahikawa and Abashiri were built during a dark period in the history of Japan. I mentioned that this is the Siberia of Japan in more ways than one. During the 19th century, thousands of political prisoners were exiled to undeveloped northern Hokkaido, where they were used as slave labor to build roads and railways. Many hundreds of them died of starvation, hard labor, cruel punishment, and the intense cold of winter here. 
Legend in these parts has it that the Jomon Tunnel is haunted by ghosts of the mistreated laborers. I didn't see any, but they say passengers on trains passing through the Jomon Tunnel have seen dark shadows walking through, leaving bloody footprints in the corridor. Anyway, when we got through the tunnel, we found bright sun and dazzling snow on the east side of the Jomon Range. This sparkling beauty made it easy to forget the dark history and spooky legends. Kitami is the largest city in northeastern Hokkaido, with 119,000 population. The Okhotsk train service gets its name from the Sea of Okhotsk a large body of water, part of the Pacific, between northern Japan, Russian Siberia, and the disputed Kuril Islands. That explains why the train service to Abashiri is using the Russian name Ohotsk, although the name is simplified in Japanese to Ohotsuku. This is Abashiri. My Japanese friends thought I was really strange. I wanted to go to a former prison colony and in the winter. The tourist blurb says some people come to watch the ice flows drift down from Russia. But in 2016, there weren't many tourists or ice flows. The town of Abishiri reminded me a little of small regional cities in the U.S. West. It has a little of everything, including a modern hospital, but everything somehow feels a bit raw. This Kiha 40 unit in local service is being hustled into the maintenance facility. As I mentioned in the previous video, Kiha 40s are everywhere in Japan. I left Abashiri after one night by the Senmo line to Kushiro. I created a video of that trip. Watch it when this one is done. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. It's one of the most beautiful rail trips I've ever taken. But in this video, we'll go back to Sapporo for a trip to the northwest corner of the island. So let's close this section with a look at the train that brought us here, returning to Sapporo as Ohotsk number no. 1. It's a Kiha 183 DMU in service on this line since 1986. Top speed is 69 miles per hour. If it hasn't already been replaced by the newer Kiha 261, it will be soon. On June 30th of 2015, I did a day trip from Sapporo to Wakanai. Wakanai is the northernmost railway station in Japan, so of course I had to go there. The train I rode northbound was a Tilt 261 DMU like this one in Sapporo Station.
Here are a few scenes on the line north of Sapporo, minus the snow which we saw in the winter a few minutes ago. The Soya trains take the same route as the Ochotsk as far as Asahikawa. So let's jump ahead to the new scenes. By the way, I'm calling June 30 spring because up in that corner of Hokkaido it seems that there are only a couple of days of summer. Maybe in August? June 30 was definitely still spring-like, cool and rainy. The agricultural theme was strong all the way. We are cresting the last hill before coming down to the port of Wakkanai. Let's take a quick look around Wakanai before heading back. This large structure was built during World War II when Wakanai was an important submarine base of the Imperial Japanese Navy. Wakanai was beyond the range of American heavy bombers. The structure was a repair facility with winches to haul the subs out of water for maintenance. During the summer months, a high-speed ferry is operated between Wakanai and Korsakov on Russia's Sakhalin Island. The return trip to Sapporo was a bit slower than the outbound trip because the rolling stock was a Kiha 183, not equipped for tilting and so required to take the many curves more slowly. On September 30th, 2016, I made a trip to Hurano in the central valley of Hokkaido, a large agricultural region known for growing flowers, especially lavender. Once again, the first leg of the trip is north from Sapporo to Asakawa. There we switch to a local Kiha 150 and head south to Hurano. My idea was to continue on to the agricultural town of Shintoku and catch an express directly back to Sapporo, but that didn't work out. A couple of weeks before, a typhoon had passed through with wind, rain, and flooding and washed out a bridge on the route. So I had lunch at a very artistic Hurano restaurant and hung around the beautiful Hurano station.
I headed back on the next service for Asakawa. This valley reminded me of California, but well watered. Of course, in winter, it would look nothing like California's Central Valley. Thank you for watching Railroading in Hokkaido's Far North. 
Larry Krieg's Rail Video 38. Don't forget to enjoy the Senmo Line video, and of course, the next in this series, which will explore the route from Sapporo all the way to the far eastern tip at Nimro.